See, that makes sense. Johan agreed. I like how you're switching between voices because it's kind of like Johan was getting it. He's like, oh, I, I got this. Now let me explain this part. <laughs> <laughs> He's figuring yeah, out I lost track of who. I lost track of who was talking, so I'm like, I'm just gonna switch back and forth, I don't care. <laughs> Does it, though? Sherwood asked rhetorically, as if to con contradict himself. Let's go back to magic and think for a moment. Is it impossible to make society work without magic? Would people start killing each other if magic didn't exist? Would people stop cooperating with each other if magic didn't serve as the bridge? Would people have trouble understanding each other if there was no magic? Would society have been stuck in the days of living on trees and hunting animals for food? Would there have been no civilization at all? Well, Johan interjected, our country only discovered magic about 300 years ago, and our ancestors seemed to be perfectly fine without it. Yes, Sherwood agreed. 291 years to be exact it might be hard for people in, in today's overture to imagine but life without magic did in fact exist that's true the professor said but life would be very different today if there was no magic we've seen magic and have grown to rely on it for everything without magic there would be no technology since all of it relies on magic perhaps so Sherwood responded but on the other hand, if the discovery of magic had never happened, life without magic would have simply continued. That way of life would be considered the norm. We would never even know that we were missing anything. Perhaps we might have discovered a different sort of technology. Who knows? Johan nodded. That's an interesting way to put it, but what are you getting at? What I'm trying to say, Professor, is that we, we now consider normal the ability to use magic and abnormal the inability to use magic was decided by a single event that happened by chance nearly three centuries ago. An accident. Interesting, Aiden said. In other words, if Overture hadn't discovered magic 300 years ago, Janice wouldn't be considered mad at all. She'd be just like any other person. Yes, and we could say the same thing about any other lunacy. Take Drake, for instance. He has social anxiety that makes him nervous around people. What about the complete opposite? What if there was a condition that made someone nervous when they weren't around pe people? Huh. Like introverts and extroverts? Johan asked. Not exactly, but pretty close. If we think of Drake's social phobia as an extreme version of introversion, surely we can imagine a similarly extreme version of extroversion on the opposite end of the spectrum. Some people are comfortable with talking. Some people are equally uncomfortable with not talking. Both are equally insane in a way, but only the former are sent to madhouses, whereas only the extreme cases of the latter would warrant an admission to one. Why the difference in treatment? Because talkative people are val valuable to society. Just like the case with magic, society was designed around communication between people. And that's simply because, again, just as the case with magic, there are many more talkative people than socially anxious people. Society's functions were naturally formed with the majority in mind. Even people who are so overly talkative to the point of being annoying, therefore are generally tolerated because they can still function in society. Sometimes their hyper-talkativity actually enables them to function so well that it is celebrated as talent. In contrast, even mild social anxiety can negatively affect one's ability to function in society unless they adapt and force themselves to be more sociable. And that's why the two cases aren't treated similarly. Are you saying that people like Drake are discriminated against? I then asked. No, Sherwood said, it's not discrimination. It's similar to how society handles magic and non-magic users. It's what's practical, it's what benefits the greatest number of people possible. So that's what naturally happens. Do you know what that means? It means the difference between what's sane and what's insane is decided by one thing, statistics. 
Many things we take for granted as normal are nothing more than accidents of statistics. Statistically, the majority of people are magicians, so society is centered around magic as a way of life. Statistically, people love to talk, so society is built around communication. Statistically, people are cheerful, so society is, is, is designed to be a home for happy people. People on the wrong side of those statistics are expected to adapt to what is favored. Those who can't, who can't are branded mad and sent to madhouses so they can be made a little more like the majority. All because of a statistical accident. But just as life without magic is possible, it's not hard to imagine other kinds of societies where people who we brand as insane are the majority. If the majority of people didn't like to talk, would society cease to exist? Or would it just be less reliant, reliant on direct communication and, and instead favor a different method to bring people together? If the majority of people were hallucinating on a daily basis, would society collapse? Or would it just build itself around hallucinations? I'm not sure about a society built around hallucinations, I then said. That sounds crazy. Crazy, perhaps, Sherwood replied. But remember that a society of non-magicians is actually possible as hard as that is to imagine. The only reason we have the society we ended up with is because of the many completely arbitrary accidents of statistics. Colton Sherwood stopped to catch his breath, but after a while continued. And that's another reason I don't want to take magic away from that suicidal boy. Just like his lunacy, it's a part of who he is. This madhouse was made to be a home for mad people, those born on the wrong side of statistics. Eclipse is not a correctional facility. I don't try to make the mad become normal. Even if you can teach inmates to be normal, that's basically forcing them to pretend to be someone they're not for the rest of their lives. And if they don't, society will reject them. Society doesn't understand these people, so they are being blindly hostile toward them. Lunatics can't survive among normal people. It's a dangerous place full of people who are ignorant and intolerant. But here, Eclipse is safe. They don't have to fear rejection. They don't have to be normal. What my wife and I are giving them is a place where they can be who they are. A place where they can be safe from society. A shelter from the outside world, if you will. They can live here forever without worry. I don't think they'd want to. Especially the kids. They'd probably want to leave when they're adult age. Be like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Ah, forgive me, Sherwood said. I just kept blathering on. We noticed. And on <laughs> about my own work. Not at all, Johan interjected. I found it very interesting. I've never thought about madness that way. You must really love the children here. Yes, Oriel and I have been married for a long time, but we don't have any children. We treat every child here as if they were our own. Johan and Sherwood continued to talk, but Aiden had stopped participating in the discussion. He was lost in his own thoughts. A shelter, Colton Sherwood called it. They can live here forever, he claimed. Aiden Wolf wasn't sure if he liked how that sounded. Accidents of statistics. Oh, we unlocked an achievement. Chapter 9. Sanity is overrated.